so it is um, growing up um, <laughs> because I said things like um, you know angels are aliens and aliens are angels. It really ostracized me and and isolated me and. Um, Though I did always think it was funny that I was ostracized by the very people who suffered from um, a bad case of ostrich mentality. What am I fidgeting with? Oh yeah, um, I got stung by a jellyfish in Hawaii, and uh, this is my favorite flower, the plumeria. You wear it on this side if you're single, and this side if you're taken, and in the middle if you're confused. Okay, that was a little tangent. Um, so, um. It was made fun of a lot in school, and I honestly didn't have any friends of my own age, um, so I did have a little paper route, which um, ha was full of old ladies, and I adopted them. I think I had 50, 50 old lady grannies on my roster that were my friends, that I would go to their house, and they would tell me about their life, and... Um, you know, what it was like to uh, exist in a time when technology wasn't prevalent at all and then, you know, to uh, witness all of this and then and the wars and all that. It's kind of fascinating what I always thought. And then they taught me how to knit and crochet. Do I know how to do that now? I don't know. <laughs> it might come back if I uh, sit down with a, a needle uh, and uh, go at it. But, um... Yeah, it wasn't also just that I didn't, uh, there, it wasn't just that I was weird that I had no friends, but I was also very, very religious in a way that wasn't healthy, that, um, you know, I just lived with the idea that, uh, everybody who partied and drank and did drugs was bad, and I wasn't going to converse with them. And, well, uh, that was my sister's life, you know, she was very much like that, partying all the time, and so, um, when she passed away, when I was 16, her, uh, friends were drinking and driving, and they are going about on 40 out of the George Massey Tunnel, and, uh, none of them were wearing seatbelts, and it was just my sister that passed away. At her funeral, I remember, you know, people, her friends saying and talking about what kind of person she was, and I was like, wow, she's really cool, I... And because I was so judgmental, I completely missed out on getting to know this kind of person. And I think it was there that it started to burst, you know, the concept that, you know, I don't ever want to judge anybody for what they do ever again. Because um, it doesn't really make them a bad person or whatever. It, I mean, that, that concept, too, just needs to be thrown out that, I mean our souls are just here to have all kinds of experiences and um, we can learn and get treasure um, from everybody, you know, if we're open-minded enough and to see past all that and still be the person there. So um, that's kind of what happened with my sister and what really started me on that path. Um, but there's a lot more, see, because um, when my sister passed away, um, my mother ended up getting even worse chronic migraines, and my dad um, ended up getting strokes. So there's a lot of times that he really didn't know who we were or what was what, you know. So um, I thought that, you know, we go to school to learn how to make money. I'm already making money because I'm in the film industry at that time, and so. I decided to leave and take care of my family financially. Um, though I've been like always giving them all my money since I was like 12. Uh, just, just tough, you know, growing up. And I've been homeless like twice. So, um, yeah, I don't, I'm not ashamed of it. I don't see it like when I tell people, they're like, oh, poor you, you've been through so much. And it really, I see it more as a gift that has really um, opened my eyes and humbled me and made me see and, and think of things very differently. This shirt's supposed to go down like that. Um, you know, like I don't, it, it really is a blessing in disguise. Like these kind of experiences shape and mold us into the person we need to be to do what we came here to do 
and it really is up to us on how we are going to react to it that if we're going to make it into a drama on poor me or if we're going to be grateful for it and and learn from it and love it was kind of what I did but um it was difficult at that time yeah it was scary you know okay you know how are you gonna make it in the world but anyway uh, back to the story of uh, how I came to be the way I am I guess if it, there is a way to pinpoint what makes us salient um so I, um, it was really bizarre, after she passed away, m not only, like, you know, what happened with my parents, but my family kind of broke apart, my oldest brother went to live at the university, he's a genius mechanical engineer with a Jesus, UBC, Cambridge College, Master's, PhD, all that, and we don't get along, we kind of clash makes me feel not very good about myself because, um, I guess he sees me kind of as a hippie. And then my other brother went to live in foster homes. He's more of the gangster rapper. And then there's my baby brother, Stevie, who, um, who all of that, that know me. He is my sunshine. He's, he's practically like my son. And, uh, so I, I spent a lot of time since my mom had migraines raising him, so we're just like that. And, um, anyway, when, um, no sooner did my sister pass away, she came back, uh, but not in the way that you would think. Um, she did cross over um, and then come back, and this is kind of unheard of because mediums only can speak to someone who hasn't crossed over to help them cross over, but here comes my sister, she comes right back, and she appears to my dad as this like white kind of angel, he says, and... Um, she's so excited and she's saying, you know, I've traveled the universe and it's like a big garden. There's, there's lots of tending to. It's just so beautiful and so amazing and oh, what an exciting time to be alive, you know. Um, I saw the contract. So just like, one sec. Boom.